Ladies and gents, welcome back once again. All things covered. Patrick Peterson, Bryant McFadden. We're here. We feel good. We're looking good. It's going to be a great episode. And with that being said, on this episode, we will recap a wild week two Monday night matchup between the Cleveland Browns and the Pittsburgh Steelers. There's a lot to talk about, a lot to digest, and lay it on the table for all of you to enjoy. <laughs> and we will be looking ahead to pr another primetime game. One thing about the Pittsburgh Steelers, they're one of those storied organizations in the National Football League that will always be on a primetime stage. They have another primetime stage out in Viva Las Vegas, Sunday night football against an AFC foe as well in the Las Vegas Raiders. We will preview that game and, um, and much, much more in this episode. So make sure you stay tuned. Buckle up. It might be a, ri a wild ride. Stay tuned. Pat P, before we get into this episode, ladies and gents, viewers and listeners, we have some big time news in regards to all things covered. All because of you being loyal listeners and watchers and for all the individuals that have been tuning in, checking us out, we appreciate this. But hey, Pat P, I don't know if you know, we're finalists for another award and our fans can help us out. Please help us out. Yes, sir. Please you can find out. us in the finals in the sports individual episodes category in the single awards for our super candid conversation with Steelers legend Troy Palomalu. The link to vote is in the episode description. Steeler Nation, do what you do best and support us. And we thank you in advance. Thank you once again. Monday night recap, the Pittsburgh Steelers beat the Cleveland Browns 22 to 20, 26 to 22. My prediction was lower. I think I had something like 16 to 10 yeah. hitting the under. The under did not hit. The over was the way to go. But who cares as long as the Pittsburgh Steelers took care of their business? I predicted 16-12. I was 10 points off for each team. But I had a four-point victory for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And guess what? The Pittsburgh Steelers won by four points. So I wasn't yeah. dead on with the exact score. But I was dead on in regards to the margin of victory for the Pittsburgh Steelers. First and foremost, Pat P, uh, we send our best wishes to Nick Chubb, yeah, um, yeah. you know, for a speedy recovery, uh, not just physically, but mentally as well. Uh, you was you were there. You saw the play. What was the first thing that came to your mind, you know, seeing a guy like Nick Chubb? And it's just a, a, a great guy, blue collar guy, great running back. And, you know, seeing that injury happen, what was the first thing that went through your mind? Man, first of all, I didn't know what happened to until they showed, like, a glimpse of the replay um, uh, on the Jumbotron. You know, because so, I was in in coverage, in per se, because the receiver, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I can't remember if it was a run, running play or if it was a – I think it was a play. Okay, I think it was a end up a run end up being a running play, but I think the tight end or the receiver who I was on end up like kind of running me out of the play. So my back was to it, and I just heard the crowd go pretty pretty wild. Then when I turned when I when I when I turned around, I saw Mika on the ground. I couldn't see the Browns player who was on the ground because everybody kind of like his old lineman was kind of like over him, hovering him, kind of like you know shielding him, kind of trying to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. Um, and then when I finally saw, you know, kind of like the guys move a little bit, I saw two four. And I was like, damn, I hope everything's OK. And then I looked up, like I said, I saw the club. I was like, oh, that was nasty. It was yeah. it was a nasty. It got high load and the rest is history. And man, but I just I just I just I just wish him nothing but the best in his recovery. Um, I pray for strength, you know, for him, comfort and confidence uh, that he can come back from from his injury because uh He's uh, arguably definitely a top five be uh, back in his league. Oh, and yeah. Best yeah. back in the league is probably between him and uh, Christian McCaffrey. So um, the sky was the limit for him, man. And you just hate to see an injury like this happen to a running back when they're already facing, you know, the contract situations, what they're going through right now. You know, yeah. so, yeah. you know, so it just, it just sucks in the totality. Um, uh, to see Nick Chubb go go down like this, and also the uh, the history of you know backs being you know dinged up, um, 
throughout the course of the season. So, yeah, it's nothing but the best, Mac. Oh, no question. No question, man. I like I said, it was difficult to see, um, and clearly, like I said, he's a highly respected player, individual, and you know, you wish him well, and hopefully. You know, there's a speedy recovery for him to get back to do what he's been doing, which has been dominating opposing defenses. Man, the energy in the stadium, man, for you, clearly, you know, first prime time game there in the stadium. I was there personally, and I'll okay. say this. I I do believe I am a good luck charm. <laughs> I, no, I just I, I was waiting hey, on it. Hey, I, the first play when y'all, you know, the, the interception, I don't know if you thought about it. First thing I said is I, it's me. It's me. It's me. I am him. I am him. But the energy was electric from start to finish, man. Uh, just jump start, you know, getting off to that type of start clearly was the total opposite than what we saw against the San Francisco 49ers. But what was the mindset for you guys defensively coming into this ball game, knowing, you know, you need to find a way to get back on the right track, most importantly, win a ball game. But you definitely wanted to, you wanted to get off to a faster start than what you did against uh, uh, the San Francisco 49ers. Yeah, um, you know, the message of the week, especially on the defensive side of the ball, you know, don't start in neutral. You know, we felt I like, like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We felt like we started in neutral last week and um kind of waited a little bit too long to get ourselves going. And we understood that, you know, when you're not successful on first down, it's kind of hard to get in your groove in the thick of things and the flow of the game and our goal was obviously stop, you know, stuff to run and, and, and try to get the Cleveland Browns in, in uh, predictable situations. You know, I mm. thought we did that for the most part uh, at a high level. You know, Nick Chubb still had a couple uh, gashing, gashing runs in there that we that we wish we could have got back. Um, but you know, we started off a little bit uh, hotter than what than what we did the previous week. You know, so uh, we we had opportunity to scratch off. The first, the first box, you know, heading yeah. to that, you know, so that was a great start by, you know, Mika tipping the ball. It, it was the ball was in his possession. Yeah, it was knocked out of Mika's hand. Yeah. That's what it yeah, was. Exactly. Then the yeah. ball got knocked out of his hand. Alice being in the right place at the right, right time. Right place at the right time. And um, taking it in for six. Yeah, Alex Highsmith, man, we got to get him on the show, boy. He was in his bag. Yeah. Boy, he was, right. he was in his bag. Boy, he had a heck of a ball game. There are a lot of people. You know, players on the defensive side that had a heck of a ball game. We will tap into that. But one thing we wanted to we wanted to figure out, not having Cam Hayward in the lineup for the foreseeable future, clearly is a big blow. But last night we saw a veteran, Larry Ogajobi, stand up, balled yeah. out, was a disruptor uh, from start to finish. Um, what kind of player he could be for your defense, knowing that you won't have the prolific Cam Hayward in the lineup, you know, for quite some time? Man, you know, uh, Larry's a, a special player, he, he, and he's always been a special player for quite some time now in, in Cleveland, mm -hmm. Cincinnati, you know, and also here in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, you know, he's one of those guys that he, he he's just going to be where he's supposed to be and dominate his position of the field, you know. So um, it, it's good to have him on the field and also having him elevate his role to a bigger uh, to a bigger role with Cam being down. Um, I just think it's just going to make him uh, that much better and that much more valuable to us now. You know, mm -hmm. having the opportunity to really go out and, um, and and create some havoc, you know, on his own, and that he did it Monday night having a heck of a game um, Monday night. You know, coming back off his, I believe he had an ankle injury, if I'm not mistaken, um, and playing some real, real significant ball uh, for us. So I'm looking for Larry to continue to do that for us. And the guys behind him, um, like KB, uh, Amon, you know, mm -hmm. have a, a good rotation um, uh, inside and out that's going to definitely help us down the road. Yeah, another player who just was dominant. He's just a dominant individual. T.J. Watt, his fumble return proved to be the game-winning score in a game in which he set the Steelers' all-time sack record. Uh, last week, you know, you said it was a privilege to play with him and just breaking him, you know, playing with him and seeing how unstoppable he is. Like, like when you talk about Watt, and I'll say this for our listeners and our viewers, if you're not a Steeler fan, if you're just a football fan, 
in two weeks of play, I know Michael Parsons has been getting a lot of recognition for the dominant performances he's been displaying for the Dallas Cowboys. And in totality, their defense has been unstoppable so far in two weeks of play. But individually speaking, I don't know if there's been a more dominant player than TJ Watt. I don't know. I mean, in two games, I think he has four sacks, uh, like three or four fumble recoveries, forced fumbles or something like that, a defensive touchdown, you know, PBUs in there as well. Uh, I think he's been the most dominant defender in two weeks. Yeah. But for some reason, you know, Parsons gets all the attention, but you can't, you cannot stop 90, man. 90's a, when he get that sack and he do that kick, I did the oh, kick yeah. with him, man, simultaneously. When he got that sack and he did the kick, I wasn't stretched out. I almost tore my, my, my strain, my hamstring. That, that, he kicked that leg pretty high, Pat. You got to be stretched out when oh, you do that. You man. I, I, I wasn't stretched out, but man, just, just when you, and, and I'll ask you this question. Throughout your professional career, you played with dominant pass rushers. Mm-hmm. Where would you rank T.J. Watt with all the guys you played with? The Chandler Joneses of the world, you know, Darnell Dock is of the world. You, you talk about um, Zedarius, you know, in Minnesota, you know, when you talk about some of the prolific is, yeah, pass T- rushes you played with. Yeah, T.J. is probably number one, man. I go, I go T.J. Chandler. Um, Zedarius. Mm. But you gotta think, K- Kalis and Darnell. They was inside guys, in, Darnell, in, in, yeah, interior guys. Yeah, they was interior guys, so they wasn't really pass rush, but edge guys. I go with those those guys. Then I have to go with um, Daniel too. Daniel is a hell of. Oh, hell I forgot of. about Daniel Hunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but TJ, hey, bro, it just oh, hold what on you now. got? What you got? Oh, what? The white Freeney, even older white Freeney. Oh, yeah, you got I forgot you had the white Freeney out there in Arizona. No mm-hmm. question. Yep. Hey, and I had Joey Porter, too, man. I put JP Senior. Yeah, right. yeah, I forgot Joey Porter as well. So you play against some passwords. You got to sit down and really thorough, thoroughly think through this list. Now, you know, you play yeah. with some, some, some goats. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm I, like 90. 90 is a grown man. He's a, he's a professional sacker. <laughs> he's a professional <laughs> sacker. <laughs> And one thing too, you, you got okay. Let me. So you, you, your defense scored two touchdowns. Yep. We didn't. I didn't see the design celebrations that we saw you were a part of in Minnesota. What's up with that? Like, like you guys are not prepping. You're not. You're not. You're not practicing your celebrations for what's going to happen. What's going on? Uh, you know, we never even went over, Matt. To be honest with you. So we we we're, we're lacking on the on the, on that be on 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 that behalf. We we did not go over touchdowns or interceptions or turnover celebrations. So yeah, we, it, you got to prep for what's going to happen. If you think it's going to happen, you got to be prepared because you guys can celebrate and, and and get your swag on. So yeah, we'll, we'll be better next time, man. I'm 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 gonna discuss that with the guys tomorrow, and we'll we will be better next time. Man, no, hey, I, that I was like the first one. I'm thinking you guys are going to go ahead and put something together, soul train line, nothing. <laughs> the second one, which was like the game ceiling touchdown, I'm like, oh, they got it. I know they got to do something that's going to go viral. Nothing. No, we, I'm yeah, like, we ain't had nothing in the bag. Yeah, we ain't had nothing in the bag, Mac. So that's why you saw nothing. Yeah, yeah. y'all got to do better than that. Now We got to figure something out now. We got we have to figure something out. But you, know, but, you, know, you know the thing is, Mac? What you got? Oh no! You know, I never saw the Pittsburgh Steelers defense like ever. Celebrate! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Hey, you really don't see the offensive guys celebrate like that. And hold on, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can you uh, please yeah. tell? Uh, can yeah, you he tell went Joe? crazy, man. He, he just he blacked out, man. I yeah, knew. He, he, I, I saw knew him at, after the game. I forgot, but he I told us on our show his celebration was going to do his draft night pose. Man, I tried. I was looking for the man. The man blacked out. This man ran from everybody. He didn't even, I'm like, where you at? Like, what? I saw him in the end zone. Two seconds later, he he died up by me. I'm like, dog. The was, man, George Pickens told us on our show in Latrobe. Well, I, I I I threw it out. I threw the idea out to him. Like, yo, you know what you should do when you score touchdowns? Do your do your ski mask pose, right? He's like, yeah, I think that'd be dope. 
71 yard late, 71 yards later in the end zone, he running around. He threw, threw the ball in the end zone. I don't know where the ball at. He threw he I don't know where the ball is, but well, can you please reiterate to George his what his touch his signature touchdown should be? That's it. That, that's what his signature touchdown should be. So we gotta wait and see exactly what happens. But listen, long story short. I know the Pittsburgh Steelers really don't do the, the celebrating thing, but I think the fans would enjoy it. You know what I mean? The fans would enjoy it, especially playing against a rival like the Cleveland Browns. I think they would enjoy it. So well, let's see. You know, I mean, you got the Raiders coming up. We're going to tap into that in a few. But it might be a good opportunity for you guys to get your hands on some more footballs or some more Wilsons and then have some fun when you do so, when you do so. How would you personally, how would you evaluate your play? And I, I got a question for you as well. Uh, PFF had you down for four targets, two receptions allowed, 46 yards, uh, had a PBU and two penalties. How would you evaluate your play? And what was being said with you? And I don't know if you know, but on the play, they hit you with a PI. I know you were saying Amari Cooper grabbed your face mask. You know the referee was mic'd up, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I didn't know he was mic'd up, but what did they catch me saying? Say nothing bad. I know you said that bad. I know you I said did. that. You were disrespectful. But yeah, he was he was mic'd up. Okay. That mic was hot when you was arguing that. Yeah, man. But I don't know what a, what a second catch came from from PFL. Yeah, they say you gave him none. I don't know either. Do you know? I don't. The only catch I know that I gave up was the the back shoulder fade to Mark. The back shoulder fade, which great coverage at the line of scrimmage. You got your hands on him. You rerouted yeah. him. You was in front. Yeah. And you know when you in front, usually that's what they're going to hit you with because he can't get around you. Um, yeah. Well contested was, throw. Well, I think that was what about 12 yards. So where did the other 20, 24 yards come from? I, I don't know. That's what they say. They say you I, gave up 46 yards. That's what I let's see what they what they need. I, I did not want to get into this this year. I really didn't. What I want them to do is put up the plays where they say I gave up a pass. And I want them to show the world on what they're grading. Like I don't even know where the second pass came from, man. I I, I remember guarding. Three passes in that game, which was the the back shoulder fade, the slant route to the to the running back, and the out route to Cooper uh to Cooper in the oh, third. Oh, you almost had you one too in the out route. I don't oh. even know where if they're talking about that deep ass comeback, bro. We we was in a zone three, a cover three. You can see me that I'm clearly t- almost seven to ten yards away from the receiver who caught the ball. That's not that's my what they, that's what that's what they probably that's what they probably that's, that's not my man. That's, yeah, that's what they hit you with. That's what they hit you with. That's why I want them to them to understand what they're great and this stuff, man. Like, like know what you're talking about. You can clearly see it. And I, and I watched the film a couple of times. You can clearly see me pointing. Here we go. Everybody's dropping in the zone. And nobody's guarding no, nobody. Nobody's guarding a man. Nobody's guarding a man. Everybody's in. The, it's, we're dropping eight people in coverage. In That's what they're talking about. They're talking period. about that play right there. And, that was, and that wasn't even twenty yards. That was like sixteen yards. Mm. Well, that's what, what they're talking about. Hey, I thought you had one on that out route, though. Yeah, if he would have threw that thing anywhere, would a would a receiver could have saw it or like in his catch radius? That was mm-hmm. six. Man. Yeah, that it was six. So the Amari Cooper catch was 17 yards where you got hit with a flag, and the other one had to be 29 yards, the one you're talking about we're using the, in the cover. That wasn't zone. even 29 yards. So hey, yeah, that's got the way that's that's what they're doing. Because I ain't never I ain't never seen a 29 yard stop route. I ain't never seen a 29 yard stop route either. That that's not possible. That's, that's why that's why I be going back. Like, where they get these numbers and how they're saying passes being called on people. Yeah. Like, it's just outrageous. But the two so penalties. I did get the offsides on the um, on the offsides. How, how you jump offsides on a PAT? Would you try to get a jump? No, nah, they 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 uh see what you boy when you see when you when you're a good edge rusher and you and you because you 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 had something to do with that miss earlier. Hey, when you when you get your hands on a couple of them in your career, three of them, <coughs> you know. Oh, they hit you with a cadence. They get they hit yeah. They, Man, I'm 33 years old, and they still trying to they still trying to catch me off guard. Hey, so, so so that I was so confused. I'm like, wait a minute, why Pat jump? So they hit you with a cadence, really? knowing you was too aggressive, <laughs> and you took off. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. Because the first one, the first one he missed, you were kind of close to it. Yeah, I was. I would say that I'm close to a lot of them, man. Like that's why I'm I still rush. 
off the edge, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> 13 years in the league, I'm still rushing uh, off the edge, man. I'm the call corner. Hey, well, that's what they got you for. And they got you hey, for that You penalty. know what we need to do? What's that? We need to get pro football focus on here. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can make that happen. We need to get them on here. So you get some clarity? Yes, I would like some clarity. I really <laughs> like I would really like some clarity, man. Can we get some clarity? Okay. Yeah. We, I'm sure we can make we can get one of the representatives from PFF to come on and join us. Every week to see the stuff that they put on. And they have yet. And I watch this and I watch film and I know the defense that we're in. I know my responsibilities. Mm -hmm. I have to see a correct uh stat that they put out about about me or, or that you put out. And I'm not even being biased. Mm -hmm. like, I'd be like, oh, and you know me, Mac. I'm I'm straightforward. Like, oh, if I got beat, I got beat. Oh, this is that. Yeah. That's this. That, that it is what it is. But this, come on, man. And it's well, week. I'm pretty sure we can make that happen. Week after week after week after week after week. I'm pretty sure we can make that happen. We we definitely can make that happen. We definitely can make that happen. One thing I want to talk to you about. Uh, did you hear the fire Mac, Mac Canada chance in the stadium? Man, honestly, I wasn't sure um, what they were saying. I really couldn't grasp what they were saying, but I did hear the chants um, that was going on, and um, and I ended up seeing the uh, you know the coach answer to that question uh, right after the game. So, yeah, man. So Mike Tomlin was asked about that, and his statement was. We Mike Tomlin acknowledged the Fire Canada chance that was heard throughout the stadium and said, this is a sports entertainment business. It's our job to win and thus entertain them. And so we don't begrudge them for that. We want them to be fat, sassy, and spoiled. It's our job. So mm -hmm. Mike Tomlin, Real what you quick. got? What you got? I'm just thinking about something. What? And I hope it's not this route. And this would it, and this way you this and this really will make me upset if it is. Cooper caught a ball about 28 yards. It was like a 28 yard dig. But it was on Levi Wallace. Mm -hmm. And he probably thought <laughs> and I'm telling you, bro. And they, well, they huh. it, it could have been so this was from my producer and Joku for 29 yards on the first and 20 from their 15. 218 left in the second quarter. And, and that Goku. was, a matter of fact, that wasn't my man either. We was in freaking cover two. I'm a poach player. If they're yeah. talking about that on the tight end. Yeah, there was a 29 yard gain. That's what they probably talking about. But yeah, pro football focus. <laughs> we were not, we was not in man to man. We was in a cover two. So therefore, I was covering in a zone. If you go back and watch the tape, if you clearly watch the tape, I'm back in. Back out in my area, I opened mm -hmm. up to the to, to the to the seven route. It was it was a nine seven three. If you want some clarification on the route combination, that you gotta, you, hold on, you might have to break down nine yeah, seven three. Outside you gotta receiver go, ran, the outside receiver you gotta, ran nine go, seven three. The inside yep. receiver ran a seven. He joke he chipped. He chipped the uh, the, the, this is the flat the, route. The TJ TJ Watt. Yep. They end up coming out to the flat. I'm 10 yards down the field. They threw a flat route. I got to come up and tackle that. And you saying that, that's my guy. Come on, man. Watch tape. Watch tape. Yeah, nah, it's tape, look, man. that's what they probably talking about. 973 concept right there. I used Watch to love hearing tape. that 973 concept. That's what I'm talking about. Why, yeah. Like, who we got watching these and putting these stats out? It's not credible. It's not credible. We're going to get to the bottom of it, Pappy. We're going to find get... We we gonna get somebody from PFF on the, the break that to, to give us some clarity, give you some clarity about. Did I not say this last year? Did I not say this the year before that? You like, did. Come on, man, watch the tape. It, could you just because you clearly see me over this guy? Do you see me guard him throughout that route? That was tell. That would tell you if I'm in a man to man defense. That would tell, or, or if I'm in a fire zone defense. If I'm not continuing to cover someone, therefore I'm in a zone defense. I have a zone area responsibility, not that man. My 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 focus is the quarterback and the ball. I don't give a damn. In, in the area of the field that I'm supposed to be protecting. Come on, man. I hear you, coach. Hey, but you know what? I I, I like when they I like when they grade you wrong because that gets you fired up. 
I love it. <laughs> I love it. I hope they keep grading you wrong and keep telling you giving up all these yards. I hope so. That gets you fired up. That's what I need. I need that same energy. You know what we're going to do? Man. We're going to send you a PFF grade <laughs> Saturday night. <laughs> That's what we're going to do. Eric, let's get it lined up. Let's give, yeah, he's giving up all these yards. PFF say you giving up all these yards. Pat P. Yeah. Patrick, that's what we're going to hit you with. We're going to see your grade Sunday, Sunday morning. Get ready for Sunday night in Vegas. That's what we're going to do. We're going to send the grade, PFL. <laughs> you get them all these yards and all these and all, and all these catches in your zone. They don't care nothing about it being cover two, cover three. If you anywhere around, that's your man. That's what they say. So be prepared. We're going to get you fired and get your blood boiling real good, real good. Real good. Hey, Pat, what, what are your thoughts about our offense? Like, I was talking about the Met, the, the fire man, Canada chance in the stadium. Uh, it was a it was an ugly, ugly night for the offense. Um, the defense outscored the offense. If I'm not mistaken, the offense scored uh, 12 points. 12 points. And I've been involved in games where offense really couldn't click. You know, for us, being a part of a team, is like, we're going to do what we need to do until they find their rhythm. Um, but so far in two weeks of play, we haven't really seen the mojo that we thought we would see based on preseason play. You know, Kenny Pickett seems to be, you know, a bit off. The entire offense seems to be a bit off. For you being a veteran player on the defense that last night was basically called a hold a fort down, you know, how do you handle that? And what do you guys do as a team to try to jumpstart your offense? Hey, you know, you know uh, where you from? Where we from? South Florida. Mm. Yeah, they got the interstate called I ninety five, right? Yeah, and they got like what? Is, I know they make it a little bigger now, so they got like. But when we was growing, it was only like four lanes. Yeah, now it's about six of them now, right? Mm-hmm. Got the fast lane, the slow lane, the medium lane, medium lane, the okay lane. express. Yeah, me Mac, in that order. I'm like in the middle lane, right? Mm-hmm. And I, in, in that middle lane, that's defense. That's the only thing I can control and worry about, Mac. Wait, let me do it. Okay. Right well, I'll do this. I'll, can, I be, can I be the voice for the fans? Can I be the voice for the fans? <laughs> I know our listeners t- tuning in right yeah, now listening exactly. and Cause checking you know, us out. What you got? You know, Mac, because like you said, you've been on teams like that, right? And as a defensive player, and as a defense, like for me, and this is the God honest truth, like we love that pressure. Like we love having the opportunity to go out there and be the reason why we win, be the reason why we take the the the, the spirit from the from the opposing teams, because that's how you win a championship. Mm. At the end of the day. Yeah, you know, the offense, you know, they 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 may have been a little bit slow, you know, you know, turning the ball over here and there, but at some point they're gonna get it right. You know, I know Coach T, he ain't going for that for too long. And he gonna he gonna find a recipe for success to get the guys in the right position to be successful. So I'll say this. Watching the game with the fans, number one, our fans are spoiled. Deserve yeah. so. They should be spoiled. We got six sticky Lombardis. They're used to seeing competitive play, physical play, beat you up ball on both sides of the football, being efficient. That's what they're used to seeing. And when you don't show that, and it doesn't seem like it's going to get better, they become a bit annoyed and they get frustrated. As Mike Tomlin said, it's your job to entertain, but most importantly, win while entertaining. And you just need to show glimpses of op- glimpses of excitement of what we can expect and we haven't seen that because Kenny Pickett towards the last part of the season last seven games was looking like okay he's going to be a guy for us this year for whatever reason so far two weeks of play we haven't really seen that and one of the more confusing things that I witnessed this past Sunday was when I watched San Francisco the same team you guys played against last Sunday defense that was a bunch of hell raisers against the Steelers played against the Rams the Rams scored 29, 27 points with a bunch of guys who nobody would draft on their fantasy team. Mm-hmm. A bunch of guys who we don't know. And the creativity is what provided an element of success 
And that has been the biggest gripe, I think, with our offense. Because we got we got guys. It ain't like we ain't got no dudes. We got dudes. Just the creativity, the 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 lack of applying pressure. You know what I mean? Either, either you know, you feeling pressure or you're applying pressure. We've we've been feeling hey, pressure. That's a hey, that's a Mike T quote there. <laughs> yeah. You know, you you gotta you can't be the one that's always feeling the pressure. You gotta apply the pressure. And we got another thing too, can we move 14 around more? Like get him, put him in ways to be more impactful. 14 is a dog. Like 14 is a dog. And when you see 14 on a cornerback, especially if he ain't lined up on Denzel Ward and he's on a guy who really ain't got that type of experience, I'm going to the matchup. Right. I'm going to the matchup. That's what you do. Match When you see matchups in your favor, oh, I got to go get that matchup. 14 is a guy who should get double-digit targets per game, in my opinion. Yes. I don't care where he at, who on him. If they ain't doubling him, if he got one-on-one opportunities or they're in a zone concept, trust that he's going to find where he needs to be and get him the football because when he touches the football, good things happen. Yeah. Good things happen. He's a guy who is the energizer bunny for our offense. And that's Kenny Pickett got to realize, yo, when I see 14 on the guy who really ain't that guy like that, we got to go get him. We got to go see about it. Yeah. We got to get him 10 targets. It should be a written rule, 14 gets 10 targets. Now, 14, whatever you do with those 10 targets, that's up to you. That's your decision. Right. <laughs> that's your decision. Like, we, that's, that's on you. But we got too many dudes on our offense for us to kind of be flatlining, to say the least. Yeah. Flatlining. Darnell Washington, I don't think he's seen a target yet. In the red zone, Darnell, we're going to play basketball. Get the rebound. I'm throwing you the fade ball. Box him out, jump over his head, get it. Mac, it's it's it, I will say this, Mac. It's gonna it's gonna show his head eventually. I hope you're right. At least at least, Dar- at least the Darnell Washington stuff, I can tell you that for sure. As far as the spark I, I, the offense, I can't speak on that. But far as Darnell Washington gonna be, you know, being a big fella and being a problem. He got he's you know, six seven. It's, Pat it's gonna- P, you play corner. You see, listen, you like, bro, if we're in the red zone. And 80 come out there with me, all right, I already know what they're going to do. It's going to happen. Like, that is just, 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 he's a matchup nightmare. So put him out there and let's let's go. Jimmy Graham, that's what we're going to do. You're going to be our Jimmy Graham. I don't care if you have, for the year, four catches and four touchdowns, I'll take it. Because those are important points. Every time. Every time. And I'm telling you this, Warren, Jalen Warren got the juice. Yeah. He got the juice. His oh, new nickname yeah. should be Microwave in honor of Vinnie Johnson. who used to play for the Detroit Pistons because he heats up fast. Yeah. He, he heats up fast. The individual efforts that he's displayed anytime he touches the football has been well documented, and he got the juice. Yeah. Like, like we, we the, I, I believe our defense can be an opportunistic group because of the pass rushers that can create turnovers, and you guys will eventually find, find a way to be more stout against the ground and pound attack. Once that offense comes to the party, now you're cooking with gas. You're mm. cooking with gas. But the fans, I would just sit here listening. Oh, boy, they boy, they be fired up. They be drunk. And boy, they be fired up. <laughs> 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 go again. I'm keep running the same plays. They be listening. They be talking and talk. They be in a liquor. They had that, that devil's neck to run through their veins. Now, here we go again. We already know what we're going to run. Here we go again. Here go another. <laughs> Jet sweep to a wide receiver. Every time he goes in motion, they be, they be on it. Here you go. Anytime you see Calvin Austin running, they're going to hand him the football. Here we go. It's like, oh, heck, if we know it, I'm pretty sure the Browns know it. <laughs> hey, Matt, you uh, can see. <laughs> hey, I'm just telling you, I was with the fans last night watching the game, boy. They, they, be, they, they, be, oh, they be pissed off, man. They just, they just want to see. Fight. That's it. That's what Steeler fans want to see. They want to see people. They don't want to see you getting punched. They want. They want you to swing back too. And <laughs> the defense swung. You know I me. Mean? Y'all gave us some plays, but y'all made plays. They just need the offense to come to the party. Cause we got too many dudes. Written rule. I'll say right now. Anytime we're going against a defense, fourteen, you get ten targets. Eight. You yeah. hear that? Fourteen gonna get ten targets. Anytime he's singled up, and even if he's on that primary guy, we gotta trust that our guy is going to win. When we was at Florida State, Mickey Andrews to tell our defense all the time. I don't care if they know what we're playing. What we play here is my man is better than your man football. 
So you know what we're playing, but we believe our guy's better than your guy. Right. So you, there's nothing you can do. You got to right. believe and trust 14 is better than whoever it is lining up opposite of him. And you know he feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> you know he feel like he he already said I'm the I'm the goat like nobody want the smoke and he yeah. talked that talk out there so yeah he need he need at least ten I'm with you 100 percent especially with Deontay, especially with Deontay being out ten uh, I'm with you 100 percent having more targets and also having a little bit more movement with him and move him all. around put him in the slot they, put they, him number they, three in the trips they, formation they, 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 where, where he's working against a backer. Like yeah. that's the, what I love about what they do with Justin Jefferson and even Tyreek Hill. Game plan against him now. Now you, because you now for me, I don't want to take this out of context. You know, I don't want to make everybody. Oh, just oh, what you about to say? What you about? I say? What you about to say? You know, everything I say on the podcast is just take out what I said bad and don't get everything. And then I, and then I end up saying lead up to it. But anyway. When I used to have my matchups against like marquee receivers like Dez Bryant, because like Dez Bryant wasn't a guy who moved around a lot. He was always the ex receiver. Yeah. So when I watch tape, I'm just watching literally, literally him at an ex receiver spot. So I'm watching all the routes he run at ex receiver. I'm a boom, boom, boom. No matter uh, all the routes he run at ex receiver, his location, where he is, location to the numbers. And that's how it made it kind of easy for me to study for him versus – and obviously, it's, you know, I still got to go out there and execute the game plan. But it made – get film study, it was easy. It's easy. Yeah, yeah. Easy to study for him versus when I had to go up against, let's say, Antonio, Antonio Brown, although he didn't have his quarterback and Ben, and ben Rosenberger, uh, Rosenberger that year, or – uh, let me see another guy who moves around a lot. Uh, so you got a guy like Stephon Diggs who moves around a lot. Stephon Diggs when he yeah. was in, in Minnesota, you know. So now I have to learn. Now I have to study when he's in the slot and he motions from from no a trip to the weak side of the formation. When he's the Z receiver, when he's the number two receiver, where his where's his location in the bunch? You know what I mean? Because they they now they're moving to him in different spots. He's just not. Uh, a dig, uh, an inside breaking route receiver. Now he's mm-hmm. running every route in the route tree, which is making him almost unpreparable for. Look, exactly, it's more you have to study for than always line up as an X and knowing that you're going to get these amount of routes just right. from that position where you're lining up on the football field. Yeah, but we got to wait and see, man. So our listeners and viewers, hit us up in our comment section. What would you like to see? differently with our offense i'm pretty sure we have some great insight can't wait to see and potentially read them as well pat people before we go to break and get ready for this uh preview for the raiders you went viral now not for cussing out the referee because he was his mic was hot but what was this what was going on out, huh i didn't curse that ref out oh you didn't i didn't say a curse word oh i i just assume i'm sorry yeah. <laughs> hey okay well, There's for going back and forth with the ref who had a hot mic, you didn't go viral for that. You went viral for another reason. First and foremost, number one, you know you're not really a dancer like that in the family. You know you're not, you really ain't a dancer uh, like that. So that's not what you do. You say uh, that for me and Walt, that we're the dancers of the family, all right? But you and Wyatt, Wyatt offensive lineman for the, the Browns, it seemed like you guys had a little conversation going on. And... Why they were trying to figure out what was going on with a potential turnover. And you know, you pointed, you what were you pointing to the scoreboard or you was pointing to the play? I was pointing to the play that is our ball. Um, I don't remember because we had so many turnovers in that in that game. I, I don't remember yeah, which, was, yeah, which fumble. It was one of the fumbles, I think. Uh, yeah, one I of the sack fumbles. It, yeah, or it was a sack fumble or or no, it wasn't a play with uh the one Casey screwed up. So I don't remember which play it was, but yeah. Prior to that drive, a young buck on the Cleveland Browns was talking trash to me. And I don't on the sideline. Yeah, yeah. And I, don't even, I don't even know his name, right? Yeah. It's like, yeah, oh, it was it was right after that when I broke up on that out route. It was like, oh, man, get your old ass out of here, man. I'm like, he called you old. <laughs> like, come on, man. Like, you'll be lucky to get where I'm at right now, man. And I said, plus... I don't even know what year you are in your career, but I said, man, I got kids' diapers that's older than your career. That <laughs> so, might be true. 
So I said, shut the F up. Then yeah. I ended up walking out. So now he turned me up. So uh-huh. now when we got the turnover, I was like, yeah, we in our bag now. And I just, you know, doing my little one, two step, if that if that's what you call it. That was a one, two step. You had, yeah, a, you had one, it going. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, his eyeball, baby. Kiss the ring. Yeah. So why it came up and uh, he was standing <laughs> there. He was, hey, and he was standing for quite some, you know, a few good seconds while you was hitting your dance. <laughs> He was. And he was like, man, what you got going on? It's like, man, I think he was down. I, so I think that was the Deshaun Watson one where, I, yeah, I think it was the Deshaun Watson fumble. But yeah, he was like, I think he was down. I was like, no, nah, dog, that's a fumble. That's a turnover. And um, he was like, man, I don't know about that dance move you had going on. I and should hit you with. And that's when he started doing it. <laughs> no question. Shouts out to Wyatt Teller, man, being a good sportsman, man. Yeah. yeah. Pat P. were right. It was a fumble. Mm-hmm. And you guys did. How many turnovers did y'all create? Four? Four that I can think of. Two interceptions. Six two sacks. fumbles. Yeah, six sacks. Yeah. Oh. Hey. Hey, we'll keep it going. And the standard is the standard. And up next, time to get ready for Sunday night football. Preview Steelers at the Raiders. Stay tuned. Pat P, now it's time to tap in Sunday night football. How many times have you played on Sunday night football? You know your career? I know that's a, a, a far-fetched type question. But yeah, you know? I'll try to man. Um, um, if I had to take a guess, it was probably only once every other year in Arizona. So I wasn't on many in Arizona. I can tell you that for sure. Uh, and and maybe and, five. So, you think you've been on Sunday Night Football five times? I can I can say I can honestly say at least because I can remember fifteen. We had a we had like three flex games. Uh-huh. So I remember in fifteen, I can remember being on Sunday Night Football at least three times. Okay. All right. So I would say and, it's safe to say probably seven, at least seven. Okay, that's a good number. That's a good number. Well, you got Sunday night with the Pittsburgh Steelers. That's what you do. When you're with the Pittsburgh Steelers, you play on a primetime stage because it's a five-star matchup because we're in it. People come to see us put it on for the city. And you, they will see the Pittsburgh Steelers put on for the city in Las Vegas. First, uh, before we get into this, to the breakdown, the preview, what's the status on Donnell's Washington suit? Hey man, he gonna be he gonna be suited and booted, baby. Okay, all right, all right. So this is what we gotta do. You gotta make sure you take a picture of the suit, send it to us, so we can go have yeah, some. And I gotta make it. sure. And I got the no, other thing too. I gotta make sure the big fella want to wear it because I've been I've been noticing big fella swag coming into the game. He's been wearing a lot of like you know just sweatsuits. So I don't, oh, okay, yeah. I don't, I, he got he gonna have the suit. It's gonna just gonna be on him to wear. It. Okay. So man. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask him Monday, I mean, tomorrow, if he's going to wear it. Well, it's going up. Yeah, it's going to be upon him. And he is going home, too. So He is going to the crib. Yeah, no question. I think that would be dope. Yeah. Hopefully, he wears a suit, he get a target. I don't think he got a target yet in two games, which I don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I don't understand, but we got to see. All right, so, Pat P., you never played in Vegas, and we know that can be a distraction for some guys. Is there a message? I have, but I haven't. But my last the preseason don't count. Yeah. That's preseason. But I'm gonna treat but is there a message for young guys on the team, you know, playing in, in a city like Las Vegas when it's a straight business trip? Man, you know, being around this group, I, you know, I know the guys understand that this is a business trip. You know, and um, a couple other teams I've been on, I can't quite say that, you know. So um, with this group of guys, guys understand that we're going there for one thing, one thing only. That's for mm-hmm. the dub. You know, we don't we don't care nothing about the lights. We don't care nothing about the strip. We don't care nothing about the extracurricular that's going on outside yeah. the hotel that we're going to be staying at and the stadium that we're going to be playing in. You know, so there is no message, honestly, Matt, because we're trying to get this we're trying to get this boat rolling down the river, man. Like we're trying to we're trying to go places where the Pittsburgh Steelers in the past have been. You know, we're trying to be now we're trying to we're trying to write our own story, Matt. You know, no so question. You got time for that right now. Do you prefer Sunday night games or Monday night games? Sunday night. Sunday night I, I, because yeah. lose that day on Monday, man. That Monday, that Monday, that, that those Wednesdays are longer, kind of. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That extra day of practice. Yeah, extra day of practice, a little bit more sluggish, you know. So, but it is what it is, man. You know, it's mind over matter. Mm-hmm. So in your career, you played against Jimmy Garoppolo five times. Do you know your record against him? 
Man, he was in San Francisco. I knew, so it wasn't pretty good. I knew that. Was. <laughs> <laughs> you won in four against Jimmy G. Like I said, I know it wasn't pretty good. <laughs> what's the What's the biggest keys in you know slowing down the Raiders' offense, led by Jimmy Garoppolo, of course. You know Devontae Adams. I don't I don't know if Jacoby Myers is going to be back in uniform. He didn't play last week against the Buffalo Bills because he was in a concussion protocol. Um, but you know what's the key in trying to slow down that offense? Man, you know, I haven't even had an opportunity to watch uh, any film on the Raiders just yet. But in the past, I know Jimmy G was a, we like to call it an, an arena football thrower, meaning he liked to keep his throws inside the numbers. That was like his main, that was his go-to throws, his high percentage mm-hmm. throws were inside the numbers, like those bang gates, those digs, those deep, those deep curl, 18-yard curls. You know, so things like that, those those were his money throws. So not knowing what type of throws he's liking in the Josh McDaniels uh, offense, if I go back through my Rolodex and going up against a Josh McDaniels offense, there's a lot of flat throws, a lot of check downs. If throws are not there, a lot of, uh, a lot of the offense run through uh, through the tight end, a lot of slip streams. With the uh, with the running back, so it's a lot of hot out plays that they they that they uh, a Josh McDaniels offense like to run and take their shots when they can mm-hmm. around the alum, uh, alumni area, you know the uh, cross country, uh, uh, which is you know they get in the twelve personnel because uh, I don't think they carry a full back, which is two tight ends, a one running back, two receivers, pretty much it's a max look getting b- both of those tight ends to block, faking the play action. You have the uh, the X receiver running the over and the fastest receiver running the the big posts to try to drive uh, to try to occupy that safety to try to get the over or the safe uh, or that deep uh, post open. You know, so just understanding what some of the things that he liked to do in the past, um, mm-hmm. it's just some of the things that's coming to me right now. So um, I have to wait and see, and I give you a better answer on yep. that. The, uh, when I start to dissect this film here in a little bit, and and I, and I know you haven't really started the film prep, but just the respect and just knowing the talent that Devontae ha- Adams has uh, as a wide receiver, I think he's a future Hall of Famer, man. Just you know, tell us about your past experiences and you know going again going against a guy like Adams and what makes him so special. Yeah, he's elite, man. He's a, he's a, he's a super elite route runner, super elite pass catcher. Um, very, very exceptional speed. Um, a competitor is a dog. Mm-hmm. He's a guy that has everything in the bag, you know, to be um, one of those daily receivers that you have to keep your eye on at all times, you know. So it's been a it's been a, pr- a privilege to have an opportunity to go up against him and to continue to, to continue to share the field with him at this stage of our career. Yep. Like you said, he he he's a guy that definitely will have a gold jacket. I believe um, when his career, when it's all said and done, and um, we have our hands full. They ain't they ain't no secret about it. You know, we no have question. our hands full with one of the more dynamic uh, receivers, game changer receivers in this game today. So we know we're gonna be on the big stage. We know we're gonna try. I know they're gonna try to to implement him in the game plan as much as possible. Uh, especially with him coming off of uh, concussion protocol um, uh, after last week. So we have to expect fireworks, you know, so we have to have our antennas up and understand where 17 location is at all times. No question. And they move him around a lot. So you you definitely need to be aware uh, of where he is. One person for their offense that had, you know, it really hasn't jump started things for them running Josh Jacobs. And when you look at the Pittsburgh Steelers, I said again, because he haven't been there. I know, but you know, eventually you can try to get that thing going. And for the, you guys running wise, you know, both offenses, they've had success in running the football. What yeah. needs to be done, you know, for you guys to try to improve that element to make opposing offenses one dimensional. Um, We just have to be more gap integrity have more gap integrity in, in the run support, you know, and as you know, uh, uh, when you play the teams that run stretch offense, that's, you know, trying to spring the play out, it's kind of hard to do that, just to, to stay in your gap because they're stringing, you, they're stringing the, the defensive line out 
for a reason. So a good running back like a Nick Chubb or McCaffrey with great vision can have uh, can use their vision to uh, to take that cutback lane because they they know how intriguing it is to an off a uh, defensive tackle seeing the ball stretch across their face and running sideways like this. You know, so mm-hmm. the biggest thing is for us just being more uh being more gap disciplined in the run game. Now what we put on tape, we have to understand teams are gonna attack us in that yep. way. And now we have to put the fire out somehow, some way. And we cannot let uh Josh Jacob let our game be the startup um, for uh, uh, for a successful season for Josh uh, Jacob coming up. So mm-hmm. we know the dynamics that Josh brings to the game. Uh, we know that the, the holes that we have to fill um, for ourselves um, is going to be a great week of preparation leading up to this game, and hopefully that and hopefully we'll do a good job of, of uh, keeping uh, Josh Jacob bottled up like the first two teams did. Before I let you go, before I get to my prediction, one play I want to talk to you about and just kind of seeing his growth so far, Joey Porter Jr. Uh, played pretty good football, real good football Monday night. Um, two critical moments where he showed up, PBU, and of course, you know, forcing that P- uh, four, uh, four down and out to end the game. You know, what have you seen from Joey Porter Jr.? And will he be more incorporated defensively as the weeks go on? Yeah, man, uh, we'll see. You know, we'll see. You know, Coach T has specific plans for young guys you yep. know and they always end up paying out to be in the young guy's best interest so no one knows what coach t has planned for you know him, it, it, young herbert as well you know yeah. him or young herbert you know but coach has a plan and and uh something in mind that he has for those two superstars two young superstars in the making that we have on our defensive side of the ball but i love the growth that Joey is uh, is taken um, thus far throughout the season, you know he 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 he's taken the necessary steps, man. That that he needs to 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 continue to be a house to be a household name and continue to be successful at the def- at the defensive back position early, you know, because I feel like when you're able to have success early and you handle it a certain way, you're able to handle failure. In a certain way, and it makes you that much home hungrier to get mm-hmm. back to the top. So I'm intrigued to see how everything is going to end up unfolding for him in his career. But I have no doubt in my mind that the uh, that the future is very, very bright for him. Man. I'm, I'm excited for him. And like I told him right after the game, I said, baby, bro has officially grown up after tonight. So. <laughs> Future is bright for him. I can't wait to see him make many more plays for this. No question. And just always be ready. Just always be ready. And so far, he's been stepping up to the plate. Now it's prediction time. First and foremost, I know Steeler fans, they will flood the stadium Sunday. It's going to be like a home game. I wouldn't be surprised to see Jimmy Garoppolo utilize a silent count because it's going to be Steeler Nation. Yeah, it's a tough tough ticket. They said tickets were, were gone months ago. It was hard to get into the building with a $300 offer. So just imagine what it's going to be like now closer to the game. So this is going to be an electrifying atmosphere for the Steelers fans that's going out there for a weekend trip. Enjoy it. Have fun. Make sure you're rowdy and you fired up uh, Sunday night. And with that being said, prediction time. My score for this ball game. Can we get another defensive touchdown? I would like it. But most importantly, let's get enough points to win and get back home. Because this is a very, very critical stretch. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, number one, winning Monday night was huge. You're one and one. You're one and zero in your division. The division is wide open. Cincinnati, they're zero and two. Cleveland is one and one. Baltimore, one and zero. And you know, there's a lot of uncertainties going on in the division. So now, when you factor in what you have Sunday night, you got the Raiders Sunday night. Then after the Raiders, you have the Houston Texans, right? So if you take care of your business week by week. In a four-game stretch, you can easily be three and one. Three and one. I mean, that that in a four-game stretch, if you're not four and oh, the next best thing is three and one. And you guys have an opportunity to do that. And it starts Sunday night with against the Raiders. With that being said, my score prediction, a close one, nail biter. Pittsburgh find a way to come out. Victoria. Get back home. Safe travels. Get ready for the next opponent. 2018. 2018. 2018, 
How, how you guys are going to get 20, I don't know. But I do know you're going to get 20. You're going to allow 18 points. You're going to win most importantly. And I'm calling for a Donnell Washington touchdown in the red zone. If we get in the red zone and he's not split out wide by himself and we don't throw him the football, I might throw my remote through my television. Don't do it, man, because you're going to have to pay for another one. Don't I'll figure it. that out after the fact. But I feel like that might be – that may need to happen just to kind of let go some anger. If that if, if I see 80 not out, split out wide, getting a fade ball, I, I don't know. We have to figure it out. That's my prediction. 2018, Steeler fans, support. Thanks for all the people that saw – uh been watching the show. We got a chance to talk to a lot of fans that they've been big fans of the show. Pat P, they love what you're doing on and off the football field. They love the All Things Cover podcast. Thank you for the support. Continue to support the guys. Flood, Las Vegas. I won't be there. The Lucky Charm won't be there. So you guys got to win without me. All right? No pressure. Just got to win without me. That's it. Just, just no pressure. The way how, you know, I got I to gotta fulfill my obligations to CBS so I can't be there. But if you need me to be there, I'm pretty sure, you know, things can work itself out. But this trip, I won't be there. So the rabbit foot won't be there. Fill it out. Figure what it we'll out. do, Matt, we'll probably get you for all the division games. Put us there. I think ooh, that, ooh, was that, that might, yeah, that might be. That might be. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to send you a PFF write-up of you, of you on Sunday. That's what I'm going to do. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> You're giving up all these passes, these tight ends and running backs and things like that in your zone. That's what I'm going to do. In my zone, they said that was my man. I gave up 29 yards. Yeah, you gave up 29 yards. That's your That's fault. My man. They, they say you old and you watch, so I'm going to send that to you. That's what they say. Thank you. No problem. No problem. Thank <laughs> me later. Thank me later. Pat P, get ready. Get you some rest. Study up. Sunday night. White. Oh, this is the first official road game, too, so can't and wait to see you guys. Wait. Yeah, on the road. Good uh, teams win at home and win at road. So this is the first road opportunity. And Viva Las Vegas. Yes, sir. Primetime stage.